immune cells are important as well. So the tumor microenvironment is a term used to describe all the immune cells surrounding a tumor. There's multiple types of immune cells in this microenvironment. This includes tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, which are the T cells and B cells, tumor associated macrophages, another type of immune cell, and dendritic cells, which are also involved in the immune response. A bunch of these types of cells can actually come together to form something called a tertiary lymphoid structure, as shown in the diagram. There have been reports in bladder cancer that increased formation of these tertiary lymphoid structures, which can be seen by a pathologist under a microscope, can predict more response to immunotherapy. But let's look at some of these types of immune cells. First off, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, also known as TILs. So higher TILs typically means more response around a tumor. And because more immune cells are surrounded to the tumor, generally better response to immunotherapy. Tumor cell TILs can be found either within the tumor cells, which would be called intratumoral, or in the area around the tumor, which would be called stromal. As shown on the diagram on the right, on the left-hand side, there's low number of TILs, but on the right-hand side, there's a higher number. This would be seen also by a pathologist just on the basic stain slides that are obtained with any surgical or biopsy procedure. So the difference here is pretty stark. However, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, because they're assessed just by looking at this tissue, there can be some variability in the scoring. Additionally, specific tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or TIL subpopulations have been studied. This can be measured by a procedure that pathologists do called immunohistochemistry. They can actually look at different types of TILs, such as T cells, which are marked by CD3, the cytotoxic T cells, which are marked by CD8, meaning the T cells that are most involved killing the cancer, as well as B cells, which are marked by CD20, and regulatory T cells, which actually put the brakes on other T cells and are measured by FOXP3. The hypothesis would be that CD3, CD8, and CD20, the measures of T cells and B cells, would be higher in patients that respond to immunotherapy and lower levels of FOXP3 would be found in the patients more likely to respond to immunotherapy. However, more work needs to be done to see if this is always the case. There's also measures of how active the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes are. So once tumor infiltrating lymphocytes become dysfunctional, they're called exhausted. Exhausted T cells actually have high pd one scores, but immunotherapy or blockade of PD-1 isn't as effective. There are some markers that have been reported of these dysfunctional TILs, including TIM-3, LAG-3, and TIGIT. These may actually be markers of patients who previously got immunotherapy but are no longer responding. And therefore, we're looking into ways to block these to enhance the response to immunotherapy. Another type of immune cell found around the, uh, around the tumor is called tumor-associated macrophages. Higher tumor-associated macrophages are typically associated with worse immunotherapy response. A marker of overall tumor-associated macrophages that can be detected by the pathologist doing their immunohistochemistry staining is CD68. Another thing to note is not all tumor associated macrophages are the same. They're split into two categories called M1, which is pro inflammatory, and M2, which is anti inflammatory. The anti inflammatory macrophages would actually decrease the immune infiltration around the tumor. And therefore, higher levels of those M2 
anti-inflammatory macrophages are associated potentially with a worse tumor response. And there's a marker that's been studied for these, CD163, as shown by the staining on the bottom with higher levels of CD163 on the bottom right panel. 